Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today I'm going to show you three ways to manage fungus gnats in your seed starts. First one's going to be prevention. That's just boiling water. I'll show you that real quick. People had questions about how much boiling water to put in your seed starting mix. The other one is just yellow sticky traps, which I recommend setting up and just having available. Um, if you have an adult flying around, they land and stick to this, you end the life cycle. The other one is a beneficial nematode. I don't recommend any of these products specifically. I will put links into the video description of my Amazon shop if you want to check them out. You just want beneficial nematodes. The nematodes will be poured onto the soil, soaks into the soil. The nematodes will eat the eggs and the worms and the larvae and all kinds of problematic stuff in your seed starting mix. It will end the life cycle of the fungus net. So we have boiling water prevention, yellow sticky traps to really just be there as another form of prevention to catch anything that may be straggling or flying around. And then we have the nematodes to put in to really deal with an infestation. All right, let me show you how to use each of these. Nothing worse than having beautiful seed starts growing. You're taking care of them for months and then you get an infestation of fungus gnats. First step is really prevention. Any seed starting mix that you bring in from any product that has peat moss in it usually has fungus gnat eggs in there. Fungus gnat eggs can really sit for years, bottom line. Freezing cold doesn't affect them, boiling water does. Of course you could moisten this up, put it in a bag, you could microwave it, but be very careful. You don't want to burn the seed starting mix in a microwave. So I use boiling water. This is 12 quarts of, potty, of seed starting mix and then just a big pot of boiling water. People always say, well, how much do I put in? It's not so much. I can tell you exactly how much to put in. You can eyeball it because your bag mix is going to be different amounts of product. You just want to really mix it through. And I thought I would just show the full mix video. You want this to go from a light brown to a dark brown and get all the corners of your container, get the heat everywhere. Now, of course, this is hot, but you want it to be nice and dark, steaming. If in doubt, add a little more. This will dry out quickly. You know, do it like... 48 hours before you're going to be doing your seed starting and it will be fine. You're better to use more boiling water than not. And again, this is all just for prevention. It's hot, press it down. And then if you want, you can put some foil on top that keeps the heat in. Let it cool down at its own pace. Any fungus gnats in there will be killed off, or at least most of them. Now, even when you do this, sometimes they survive. Um, I had them come in on potatoes before, on house plants before. For whatever reason, they may make it into your house. So this is what you do with the sticky traps and the nematodes. So it's important to understand the life cycle of the fungus gnats. Typically, they show up in your seed starting mix in egg form. Once you hydrate them, give them the 67 degree temperatures in your home, they hatch and they start. Once they hatch, they crawl through your seed starting mix and they look to feed on the roots of your seed starts. As they mature, you'll see insects that will crawl along here. Eventually they can fly. You have the adult and the cycle starts. It will fly around, land in other places, lay eggs, and the whole process starts. So the other thing you can do is if you do see them, set up yellow sticky traps. Again, I will put the products I'm using in the description. You can go to my Amazon shop. I don't particularly recommend these, nothing wrong with them, but I just want to give you an idea what to use. So nice, large, yellow sticky trap, and you want to put one or two on each level. And this is good to do even if you don't see them, because if you have a straggler or you have a couple that hatch, that's not usually a problem. It's usually happens over weeks when they just keep laying eggs and they continue to hatch, become adults, 
lay eggs, hatch, etc. Put one on each level, use it as prevention, use it to control small populations. They will land on it, stick to it. You remove an adult, that's less eggs being laid. Now, this is uh, important because if you do all the, of the first two, you still may, may end up with an infestation or you're just gardening or you're just seed starting for the first time and you don't know what's going on. Now you have a huge infestation. Let me show you what to do. The beneficial nematode. So if you have an infestation, you can't control the fungus nets that are flying around. Go with the beneficial nematodes. This is one product. Each product will have different instructions, but generally speaking, this is how you do it. Nematodes like 50 to 85 degree temperatures. So if you're using this outside, you want to mind the temperatures. Indoors, you're probably at 60 or 70 degrees. UV light from the sun can damage them. So outside, put this down in the evening. If you have UV, any type of light in your seed starts, if you're using specialized lights or something, you're going to want to turn the lights off. I would actually recommend doing this in the evening too, when your lights are going to be off for eight hours. So one of these packs have five million nematodes in there. You can buy the amount that you need for your, you know, your growing station. So one pack goes into two gallons of water. You want room temperature water? Now this is the pack. The instructions aren't the best. This has been in here for about 30 minutes. I got in there, mixed it up, but a lot of the gel or whatever the bedding material is stays in there. I don't know if this is supposed to dissolve all the way out, but I would say at least 30 minutes and really move the T-type bag through here, agitate it. Now we're going to do this two ways. We're going to bottom water, let the nematodes absorb into the starting mix, and then we're going to pour right on top. If you're pouring in the house, of course, I got this at Home Depot. It's great. You know, it holds soil, except when I miss it, of course. And any water that collects in there too, I'm going to pour right into my seed starting mix and just use the nematodes in there. You know, maybe they survive, maybe they don't. So two gallons is really enough for 125 to 250 square feet. It's more than we need here. They say don't store this for a long period of time. I'm not sure what that means. If I have extra, I'm going to hold it and just use it anyway. I mean, worst case is they die out. But every seven to 10 days, you want to give them a dosing of the nematodes. And I recommend doing it one time now, like we're doing, and again in 10 days. And the reason you're doing that is you're just trying to break the life cycle of the fungus gnats. Now, like I said, I'm going to have plenty. I'm going to do all my trays. You want to do everything in, the, in your grow room. Over here, uh, this is actually a custom color for the rusted garden. I've been talking about this. If you want to grow vertically, I'll be doing a series. You can pick these up at greenstockgarden.com. There's only about 100 of this color left. I'll put a link in the video description, but make sure you put the nematodes into every soil in your grow room. So these are my overwinning peppers. They're doing pretty good. Some uh, tomatoes I'm growing, they will get soaked too. So pretty straightforward. I won't spend a lot of time showing you this. We're going to just soak every cell. You want to make sure some of the liquid gets into each cell and you want it to soak down to the bottom. There we go. That is one cell set up with the beneficial nematodes and they should do their trick. The other thing that you can do, and because we're, there's so many, I mean 5 million nematodes, even at the microscopic level, is a lot. So this is a tray. I always talk about bottom watering. Don't mind watering the tops of established plants. Not always crazy about watering seeds that are just starting to germinate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a 50-50 mix. Whoop. Good to have vinyl floors. <laughs> really good to have vinyl floors. And I know I just prepared this mix, so there's not a ton of fungus gnats in there, if at all. Fill this up about a quarter of the way. Let the nematodes absorb in that way. And that sets up a tray using the bottom watering method, a tray using the top watering method, and I am just going to go through and soak all of these in. These are three ways to really defend against fungus nets. They are a problem, 
we've all probably dealt with them. Use boiling water in your seed starting mix, put up the yellow sticky traps, and then if you notice a problem, I recommend the beneficial nematodes in the soil. Cycle one at seven day, uh, well, do cycle one, and then in seven or 10 days, do the next round of the nematodes. And that should control the problem for you. You don't have to wipe them completely out. You just want to reduce the population so you get happy, healthy seed starts to put out in your garden. Once they're outside, things will be fine. Thanks for watching, and please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com.